Hi, this video is about horizontally launched projectile problems and how to solve them. Imagine that we have a wild cat and it's in a tree. And so it leaps from the tree branch, which is two meters high, to pounce on a shrew four meters away. How fast does the cat have to leap in order to get dinner? Assuming that the cat leaps horizontally, not up or down, but just sideways. So the first step in solving a problem like this, and we'll see many things uh, like this uh, in the future, in class and in the lab, uh, is to make a sketch, just to kind of uh, get your mind around what's going on in the problem and what you need to find. So I've done that here. I, I drew a, a crude tree and a tree branch, and that's my wild cat. At least I use blue, right? Um, and the tree branch is up, elevated from the ground. Here's the ground. The shrew is way over here. It's a purple shrew. I don't know why. And then I drew the trajectory that the cat would take. So we learned in class that projectiles take uh, trajectories that are parabolas. And so it'll go sideways and fall down and hopefully reach uh, dinner so it can eat. And then I went ahead and I labeled the vertical height, which is two meters, we told that in the problem, and the horizontal distance, uh, which is four meters. We're also told that uh, in the problem. That's our first step. Uh, before we go any further though, let's, let's kind of get an overall strategy that we're going to use to solve these projectile problems uh, for this unit. So the first step uh, in your strategy here is to label the sketch of the trajectory. The trajectory is what we call the path that the projectile takes. And then we're going to use the guess method, but sort of a modified version. So our givens and unknowns we're going to organize in an x and y chart. More on that in just a second. And then there's some space for to write equations, substitute, and solve over here. And then in the corner on these, we're going to make sure we do some answer checks to make sure that we're um, doing OK. We've got everything done that we need to get done uh, for a complete problem solution. So that's our overall strategy. We'll come back to a filled in one here at the end. But the first step after we label the sketch, and uh, you can do that on your own paper, as uh, hopefully you already did, um, is to organize our data in x and y columns. So the key idea in projectile motion is that the horizontal motion doesn't affect the vertical and vice versa. The vertical doesn't affect the horizontal. And we can treat them separately. We will treat them separately. And uh, that will allow us to solve some, um, some questions some problems. So we'll organize the givens and unknowns in X and Y chart. Everything that I might possibly know or want to know in the horizontal I've listed here. Now you don't have to do that every time, but sometimes at least in the beginning that's a good way to start for us to talk about it. So in the X, I've, lab I've listed average velocity, original velocity, final velocity, acceleration, uh, displacement, and time. And I did the same thing in the Y column, in the vertical column. Average, original, final velocity, acceleration, displacement. I use delta Y instead of delta X because it's vertical. Uh, but you can use delta X or delta Y, it doesn't matter. It's just a displacement. And then uh, the time there at the bottom. So <clears throat> the first thing you need to do is figure out what is the problem asking? We're asked to find how fast the lion has to leap. And it's leaping horizontally. So in essence, we're looking for these horizontal velocities. But a key thing that you'll need to know in this whole unit, actually with projectiles, is because our projectiles are in free fall, they're only under the influence of gravity, and gravity only pulls vertically. There is no accelerator. Once the, the wildcat leaps from the branch and the wildcat's in the air, there's no acceleration horizontally. So in all of our problems, I think maybe except for one exception, which I just threw in there for fun, um, the acceleration will be zero. It's not going to speed up or slow down. We're ignoring air resistance. Uh, it's not going to speed up or slow down sideways. So in fact, it doesn't really make sense to talk about original and final horizontal velocity because it never changes. So I'm not even going to worry about final and original because those are always the same. What I'm looking for is that average horizontal velocity. How fast does that, line, that wildcat have to leap uh, to get the shrew? But we do know some other horizontal information. We know it has to go four meters. So I'll put four meters there. And I think that's all I know. I, I know the acceleration is zero in the horizontal, and I know the horizontal distance that it has to go is, is four meters. I don't know the time. In the vertical, the uh, situation is different. So in the acceleration in the vertical, we know that gravity is going to accelerate it. And we're using uh, 9.80 for our acceleration, meters per second squared. And let's go ahead and stick with the convention that down is negative. I'm going to write that over here just for emphasis. So we'll use down for negative. 
I guess that makes us do right for positive. So in the horizontal, right is positive, left is negative. In the vertical, we'll use negative for down and positive for up. So the acceleration is down, right? Gravity pulls things down, accelerates things down in the, in the vertical. The vertical displacement, remember that, that tree branch is two meters above the ground. So that vertical displacement is also down two meters. So I'll put a negative sign there. I suppose you can make them both positive, but they have to have the same side because they're in the same direction, they're both down. But what about this stuff, the velocities in the vertical? Well, the vertical velocity is changing. Uh, I don't know what the average velocity is in the vertical, but I know what the original vertical velocity is. What's the vertical velocity of the Wildcat when it just begins to leap horizontally? That's zero. It doesn't go up or down initially. Uh, it's just leaping horizontally. So the initial vertical velocity is zero. The acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and the displacement is negative 2 meters. And those are the things that we know in the vertical. So some things in the horizontal, some things in the vertical. <sighs> OK. How do we get to this speed? How do we get to this average speed? Well, think about the equation that you would have to use in the horizontal to give you an average speed. You have two equations on your, on your equation card with average speed in them. One, in, one of them involves original and final speed, but those don't change, so that one's not going to help you. The only other one that's there for average speed is displacement over time. But we don't know the time, and that's, that's a problem. <laughs> so. <clears throat> The thing about projectile motion is we can treat the horizontal and vertical separate. But isn't it true that the lion spends the same amount of time going horizontally as it does going vertically? In other words, if I could find the time over here in the vertical, I could take it back over here and use it in the horizontal. Time is that special quantity because the object spends the same amount of time moving horizontally as it does vertically. So time is a, a, a special variable for us because it's the same in both columns. It's the same. So it's like you're, uh, you're preparing a, a meal for a date. They're going to come over to your house and you're going to cook for them. And so you know what the meal you, you want. You want this average velocity, right? And you have a recipe. You have an equation. But you're missing one ingredient. And so you have to go to the store or the farm or the farmer's market or wherever to get that missing ingredient so that you can plug it back over here in your recipe and get the, the meal that you want to impress your date. So that's what we're going to do. We'll go over here in the vertical, and we'll try to find the time with the vertical information, because it's the same in both columns, and use it over here in the horizontal. I think I want to put this down. But yeah. So <clears throat> in that equation substitute solve area, the first thing we need to do, we need to recognize that this average velocity in the horizontal is what we want, but we're missing the time. So we'll go to the vertical, and we'll look for an equation that uses the things that we know in the vertical. For example, we know the vertical displacement. We know the original vertical velocity is zero. And we know the acceleration. And the only other variable in this equation is time. And so we can use this equation to solve for time. So I wrote my equation down. That's the E. I then substituted things that I knew. So the vertical displacement, the original vertical velocity, and the acceleration. I'm going to slide this over just a bit so you can see it. And then I start solving. So 0 times t is 0. 0 times anything is 0. Half of 9.8 is 4.9. So I simplified it to this, times t squared. And then I had to divide both sides by 4.9, which I did here. The negative signs cancel. They cancel. And that gives me some value for t squared. And then at the very end, I took the square root of both sides. So I took the square root of t squared, the square root of that. That'll give me t is 0.63887 dot 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 seconds. So just, just under 6.4, or sorry, 0.64 seconds. That time is important. I'm going to put that um, back in my columns up here on both columns because it's the same in both. Oops. So I use that time over here in my horizontal equation. And in the horizontal, the displacement is 4 meters, but it's the same time which is this 0.63887 dot 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 seconds. I divide, I get 6.26 meters per second, and then I round off to 6.3 because I think 
the oh. question had two sig figs in the thing. So we'll go back and check that in a minute. So we found the time in the vertical using this equation. And we used it in the horizontal to find the horizontal speed. The key thing about this, the key thing about this whole process is that horizontal and vertical are independent and you need to keep the horizontal information separate from the vertical. The only exception to that is the time because it spends the same time moving horizontally as vertically. And I think we got our answer, our 6.3 meters per second. The last step on our strategy is to do some answer checks. And so you've been doing some of these automatically, but some of you probably been doing them uh, a little bit more diligently than others. So I want us to practice with that. The answer checks are, did we answer every part of the question? Sometimes questions have two, two parts and you need to answer both parts. Well, we did that. We only had one part in this particular question, just how fast. Did we circle the answer? You'll flip back on the video and you'll see that I did circle my answer. Is the magnitude of the answer reasonable? Is 6.3 meters per second, is that a ridiculously slow speed for a cat? Is it a ridiculously high speed? I don't think so. Do you remember our, our rule, our kind of rule of thumb about velocity in meters per second? If you double it, it's about the same speed in miles per hour. So you double 6.3, you get 12, 13 miles per hour. That seems reasonable for, for a cat to leap. Did we include a direction? Well, because the question didn't ask for direction, didn't ask for velocity, it just said how fast, um, I put not applicable. That doesn't really apply to us. Um, although I guess you would say in whatever direction the lion was leaping. And then units, I put units, but meters per second, so I checked that. And I checked my sig figs. There are two significant digits in our answer because both data points had um, two. I will point out, though, that 9.80, we know that to three significant digits. So you're usually not going to have more than three in the answer, and sometimes less. And for the final board, I just put up kind of what it would look like in that whole frame and process to do. So we'll practice with these in class. Um, review this. Make sure you got these examples in your notes. Thanks.